Welcome back to Customer Tech Talks. I'm Ben Walters, and this is where you'll hear real stories from real customers with real learnings. First up today, we have DB Schenker, who used Microsoft Security to support their employees working remotely. Let's take a look at the video. Hello, my name is Stefan Haas. I'm the Head of Infrastructure Steering, working at the Global Infrastructure Services Department at DB Schenker. DB Schenker is one of the world's largest freight forwarding companies. We are focusing on land, air, and ocean transport and on contract logistics. The focus is on the B2B business, and we are shipping from a simple pallet of goods up to a full load container, or even as needed, a 65 million year old dinosaur. The challenge at DP Schenker over the last months during that COVID-19 crisis was to enable our users to work from home. From home, this is more than 40,000 people, and our Microsoft-based 100% cloud approach for our workplace infrastructure utilizing the complete M365 or stack allowed us to do that without any limitations. We were fully able to support our customers. So I have Stefan Haas, Head of Infrastructure Steering with me today. Welcome, Stefan. Thanks, Ben. Great to be here. So as a logistics company, I expect you were probably pretty heavily impacted by recent events. Can you tell us a little bit about how you approached having your employees work from home? Yes, it's currently a challenging time. The consequences of COVID-19 hit DB Schenker also massively. Um, to secure our employees and to follow government requirements, we had to enable up to 40,000 users a day to work from home. This is more than 50% of our workforce. Our cloud-first approach, especially our 100% cloud-based workplace, utilized the full Microsoft M365 stack enabled us to keep our business up and running without any interruption. IT security has especially here a very important us for us. We secured our environment by using access technologies like MFA or Windows Halo for Business, and our confidential data is protected by AIP. We are also trusting the intelligence of the Microsoft Cloud by using the ATP family in our security stack with Defender and Office ATP. Right, and I know that you know from a Microsoft standpoint, we had to deal with a similar approach of being having all our employees go and work from home. Did you? How did you deal with the fact that you know a lot of your employees had varying devices? You had people who were on laptops, others who were on PCs. How did you approach that, and how did you deal with that? When we designed our workplace environment, we put among others the focus on full end-user self-service from everywhere, but always under the security umbrella. For example. We are utilizing client enrollment only for the autopilot registered devices. Um, we had a clear patch strategy, patch strategy, or let me better call it an evergreen approach for all the monthly quality rollouts, but also for the half year yearly feature releases directly from Windows update. We extended our Intune capabilities by a sidecar agent called Reonjoin to um, to deploy software and policies from everywhere in the world where the people are currently located, just internet connectivity uh, is needed. From the underlying hardware perspective, what you were asking, we make completely no difference between desktops um, and laptops. They're all configured equal, which allows our employees to even take their desktop home and continue working from home. The end user self-service experience, but does not stop at the client enrollment. We also introduced Teams to our users directly when Microsoft released that uh, several time ago to enable full user and full end user self service um, from peer to peer communication and team collaboration up to enterprise create video and town hall meetings. We harmonized this area massively and decommissioned a lot of legacy systems. And, and thinking about those other systems, as I understand you, when we spoke earlier, you mentioned that your VPN infrastructure had to be refreshed and updated because it just wasn't really built to handle the load of having 50% you know, of your workforce hit that all at once. Yes, indeed. Uh, our former VPN environment was built on traditional on-prem infrastructure out of uh, free hubs on the, on the cloak. This was designed to support a couple of thousand users per day for remote work, but was never ever um, planned to support or scale out up to several 10,000 of users per day. We used here also 
the power of the cloud and deployed Zscaler ZBA within one week, directly connected to an Azure AD integration and utilized already um, existing um, security measures like multi-factor authentication, conditional access, or a seamless single sign-on. Also, the needed ZBA agent was deployed remotely over the internet seamless by VM join to all the users wherever they are currently located. Now, as I understand, when you uh, first were hit by this, and, and as I understand, DB Shenkar was hit early, much earlier than other organizations, given that you had employees who were in China, um, you were had to address how they you know, got stuck at home and how they were going to work with your systems. How did you approach that and what did you learn during that process early on? The lockdown in, in, in China hit us directly during the Chinese New Year's vacation period. A lot of our employees traveled through China to their families without having their corporate devices with them. Again, here, the power of cl cloud enabled us in a short period to transform our already 100% cloud-based workplace to a Windows virtual desktop hosted on Azure. And we enable so our employees to, to work securely from their private PC um, without exposing any Schenker critical application to their private device. And this overall actual situation showed dramatically that our overall cloud first approach is the right choice. We can adapt our infrastructure and applications to the current need and be able to, to scale out or scale down as flexible as we need it. Yeah. And DB Schenker was still in that crazy time, still able to serve our customers without any interruptions. Really, really great. And great to hear how quickly you could respond to that situation as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Stephen. Next up, we have Aoife Law, who creates custom photo products for consumers. Let's have a look at their video. My name is Christian Donhauser, and I'm the head of group business applications at Ifalor. Ifalor is an international online service provider for personalized, unique photo products, and our customers are end consumers. My passion is to make great photos when I'm out with my family, and this is what I'm trying to do for our customers. I try to provide our customer get their photo products in time and with the highest quality. So the primary facing was moving from a heterogeneous ERP environment that was installed on premise and going on a harmonized, reliable ERP. We decided to use Microsoft Dynamics 365 cloud services in order to get state-of-the-art technology and take advantage of Microsoft services like Azure and Lifecycle services. Hi, Christian. Great to have you with us. Hi, Ben. Great to be here. Now, Ifalor had an interesting journey to the cloud. Can you tell us a little bit about where you started? Um, yes, when we started in 2016, our primary facing um, was moving from a heterogeneous ERP environment that was installed on-premise on two sites. I'm going to one harmonized ERP um, across um, the group. It was really a desire from, from the business to, to unify um, these deployments. And at this time, the D365 cloud services came into the market. And yes, of course, we intend to use state-of-the-art technology and our management board to prove it. So this was a um, starting point for our cloud project. Now, as, a, as an organization that makes customized photo products, I understand that you have a, a pretty huge number of orders that come through during kind of those busy seasons. Um, when we spoke earlier, you mentioned that um, the ability to support that large number of orders is why you look to try and unify that and harmonize that. Um, now, Dynamics 365 in 2016 didn't really suit your needs. Can you give some details as to why this was the case? Yes. Um Let's first talk about some facts so that everybody um, and, uh, understand our situation. So in our house high season, um, we are proceeding per day up to 30,000 um, sales orders and 85,000 packing slip and invoices. And we are posting up to 700,000 financial transactions. So our requirements in terms of performance and reliability and troubleshooting is um, really extraordinary. And we need an efficient environment monitoring as well so that in case of an incident, we are 
really quickly can find the cause and fix it. So we made the proof of concept with the cloud, but um, this unfortunately failed at this time because um, it doesn't pass these requirements. So we decided to go to on-prem in order to get control to the infrastructure by ourselves. So really, we go back to this old-fashioned way of thinking that install the infrastructure in house and that, then you have um, control of, of, of it. But of course, I sent then feedback to Microsoft, share my experience, and um, summarized our experience uh, requirements again. Right, so you, you took that approach, you decided to go back on premises, but then came back and reassessed Dynamics 365 later on. Um, can you give me a little bit of an idea as to what drove that idea of coming back to the cloud and taking another look at it again at a later date? Mm. Um, let's say the huge number of transactions are triggered by third-party tools, um, which are linked to our Dynamics um, 365. And this is, for instance, our web shop where the customers place their orders, and these are production systems. And in on-premise, this interface do not really perform um, reliable, and some of them even um, doesn't work. So another big issue was the integration of the global user management, and finally, we do not get um, the expected performance. Again, we really stuck, and, um, but to be honest, I never really gave up the cloud, and I was very, very happy. Um, that in the meanwhile, the cloud was really updated with mostly all our requirements. And I can say Microsoft really listened to us a couple of months ago. And now there is really an efficient environment monitoring and our interfaces and processes performed great and reliable. And there are even tools for SQL analysis and SQL actions, and I'm pretty sure some of the attendances are really now surprised that I'm talking about SQL analysis and SQL actions in a cloud environment, but this really helps us to get this great performance. And, and so come forward to today now, your, your first high season was in 2019, and it was really kind of the first water test of this new system. And as I understand, it actually more than met expectations. So as we go into a new high season for 2020, you know, what are some of the learnings and some of the things that you can share with others who are looking to kind of take a similar journey? So yes, indeed, the last high season in 2019 was from ERP point of view, the best high season so far. And one learning was, that it is not just um, infrastructure and hardware, which brings a great performance. It's also a matter of process design and efficient coding. And on this, Microsoft and our partner really pushed up for improvements. Another big issue is data cleanup because our database increased very fast. And yes, um, at the end of the day, I could really say um, on-premise was a waste of time and money. Cloud was the right decision and bring big gains um, to our business. And just let me tell, um, give the audience one, one important hint. You have always to be aware that cloud services are used by public internet lines and sometimes internet lines are interrupted. So you have to take care about business critical processes and decouple them from the cloud service and then it's really um, the best decision to, to run an ERP in the cloud. Well, thank you so much again for joining us, Christian and Stefan. Great to have you both with us. Of course, if you want to hear more about customer tech talks, you can check back during the event. And if you want to learn about any of the technologies or things we've spoken about here, you can check the links below or head over to microsoft.com learn to get started.